everybody, my name is Lane and I am the crafter and DIY blogger at craftylifemom.com. Today's project is going to be a lemony sweet project that you will want to recreate on your own. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay everybody, I am going to go ahead and get started with the project. I just wanna kinda of go over the materials that I have laid out for this project. So the first thing that you're actually going to need is the printable that I have included for you to download with this project. It actually comes with four designs and I'm going to be using the freshly squeezed lemonade design today, um, but you can use any of the ones that you see pictured here if you would like to use any of these images for the project that we're gonna be making today. This is actually free and it's included with the project so you can download it and create it as many times as you want to, print it as many times as you want to, and use it over and over. So that is the first thing that you're absolutely going to need. Mom, I just wanted to share with you really quick my crafter's toolbox. It is a subscription club that has um, over 20 different files that get dropped every single month as long as you're a member in the subscription and basically what those files include are at least 10 SVG cut files um, that you can use for your Cricut and your Silhouette machine. There's also videos in there and ideas for what you can create with those files along with printables. Um, some of the printables that we include are seven to 10 pages that have printables for crafting, or you can like decoupage them or mod podge them onto something. Just to kind of give you an example, here's a look at the May printable pack that we have included, which is actually downloadable for seven or 60 days. And then the new month every drops every month on the first. So you actually have access to the files to download them for 60 days, but you have them forever once you've downloaded them. And like I said, every single month, new files are dropping. So here's a look at the May printable pack that is still available up until July 1st. And it just includes like simple things like this that you can print, you can put them easily like into a frame. You see like that, um, easy, quick, change out your home decor type of printables, or it actually comes with printables that are actually um, a little bit smaller. You can size these actually however you want to. This one is coffee is always a good idea. It makes a great coffee bar decor item. Um, and then we have different sizes so that you can do seasonal decor with these. Or if you want something fun and bright, you have all of these. These are just some of the ones that are included in there. Hello Summer, this one is my favorite. I actually have it framed at my front door um, on a credenza table, like on a console table, right when you walk in. And so there's just tons of these printables that are included. Then, not only do you get the 10 SVG cut files and those printables for crafting, we also have a monthly um, couple of sheets for planning, bucket lists, they're seasonal, to the month. So for this one, we have a summer themed um, printable worksheets and it includes like a bucket list that you can create your own type of things and it also has suggestions, things to make, things to do, things to read. Um, and because um, summer's a little bit different, especially for me, I have kids, we're off from school from the summer, I have a summer schedule where you can outline the things that you're doing, um, places you're gonna go, all of your biggest must do things that you wanna do. And then this also includes a reading list. So I'm gonna be doing a reading list with my kids. We're gonna list all the books that we read. We spend about 20 to 30 minutes reading aloud together, taking turns. And so that is included in the May printable pack. June's printable pack is coming um, tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. And like I said, you'll have access to all of these files. It's just $10 a month and you have 60 days to download them, but you can have them and use them forever. So I hope you'll check it out. Look at the link and I will see you guys on the inside. And then you are going to need some sort of um, napkins. I had these left over from last year for a project that we did and you're just going to need um, one to two napkins. It just depends on how big your area is. Um, one napkin will work just fine for my project. So any pattern napkin that you, um, you know, 
want to use as like a background pattern. Um, I've seen some really pretty floral um, napkins. So, you know, you can do anything you want. You don't have to do this like a gingham pattern that I have, but just a napkin that has a pattern on it. You're going to need a surface that you're actually going to be working on. This is a scrap piece of wood that I had. It was just cut into this tag shape, um, but you can certainly do like a rectangle, anything that you have lying around. This is one quarter inch plywood and like I said, this was like a scrap piece laying around. This is one side and then this is another side. And this is my smoother side, so I'll probably be working with this side. Now, in addition to that, um, I'm going to be adding our printable image to a canvas. This I just picked up from the dollar store. It comes in a pack of like four of them for a dollar, very thin. Um, and it's just, you know, a little bit of cardboard with a stretched canvas on top. We're going to be using that as a layering piece so that the paper and the napkin don't blend together. Um, and then you're going to need some ribbon. I have some here. I have some jute twine. Um, and this cute ribbon that I found on clearance at my local craft store. And then um, any kind of embellishments. I've had these in my craft stash. They've come from various craft stores, the dollar store, anything that you can kind of find to kind of add to the sign that you're making. In addition to that, you're going to need some paint brushes, some Mod Podge, some scissors, obviously, to cut out your image, and paint. If you want to do any kind of, you know, adding color or anything like that. So I pulled my paints out and we will see um, how it looks as we go and create to see um, if we need to add any kind of color or that sort of thing, maybe tweak the sides. So to go ahead and get started, the first thing that we want to do is lay out our piece of wood or you know if you have like backer board or you can even use like chipboard whatever your surface is that you're going to be working with along with um, your napkin now most napkins come in a two ply um, here most pattern napkins anyway so what you're going to want to do is remove that darker that one um, back layer and the reason for that is is because this allows our mod podge to kind of soak through a little bit better and what i like to do is just kind of measure to see how it's going to look i'm going to coat the entire background with this pattern and i'm not going to cut my napkin until i've actually um done my my background here and i'm going to show you so i'm going to start with my mod podge and just a paintbrush I'm going to, you know, get that a good amount on there and I'm going to just coat my entire surface with this Mod Podge. Um, we want a good layer on there. You don't want it to be too, too thick, but you also don't want it to be too thin. So as you add your glue or your Mod Podge, well, it's kind of like glue, right? But as you add, as you add it, just keep running through the parts you've already done just to kind of keep it all wet and even in your coat. So you can kind of see that's what I'm doing here. And once you get it coated, and this is like a pretty easy project, couple of steps to it, but it's a simple project that you can do. And it's great for changing up your home decor, like with the seasons, you can do it for any season. The one that we're making today is summer based, um, but you can do it for any, Kind of year you could do the holidays whatever you choose all right so my layer of mod podge is pretty good so we're going to put that to the side lay down my brush and just a little tip so you can either take the napkin and put it on top which is totally fine or you can just lay it down face down and try to find the least wrinkly area and I'm gonna go with this side actually because I feel like it's the seam is a little better and then what I'm going to do is just kind of take my my surface here my board let me get it up so you guys can kind of see that in the camera here Not sure I've got it good I'm going to just lay this down and it's okay if it um, 
you know, has a, a border, right? So I'm just gonna kind of like push into the napkin and kind of pull, push out the napkin as best as I can, right? And then I'm gonna lift this up just so you can kind of see how it is nice and smooth on there. So to get the excess off, you can just simply cut it. And the thing about this, guys, is if you cut too much of your napkin, it's totally fine. You can take like a sanding block or something like that to kind of ruffle down the edges. But we're going to take our Mod Podge in just a second here and apply it on top to kind of um, soak this pattern into our base, okay? So you can just see, I'm trimming it by just seeing what needs to be trimmed here. I can't even see what the top looks like yet. May be perfect, may not be perfect, and I'm not gonna worry about it. So look, there's a, there's a look at our surface right there, okay? And remember, this is our background, so it's not, you know, anything too crazy. It's just a simple pattern that's happening in the background. Now, once you get that, what you're going to do, which I did the wrong brush for that, so let me just wipe that off because I might be using this one for paint, which is fine. It's got a little bit of the Mod Podge, but it's fine. This brush I just like a little bit better. It's a little more um, loose. So I'm just going to take my Mod Podge and I'm just going to work this out to the edges here. And I really am just going to let this napkin soak up Mod Podge, okay? Try not to like tear when you paint, when you paint the Mod Podge, and maybe work from the edges inward or the, um, do this, the edges first, kind of helps, and then work your way outward, if that makes kind of sense. So I kind of did the middle there. I'm gonna work my way out to my glued edges. Like so. And just getting it kind of soaked in there rather. And I know it looks like a big old mess right now. And you're probably wondering, that's probably going to be horrible. But I promise you, it won't. It's going to work out fine. It's going to dry. We're going to have this nice, lovely pattern happening in the background. Okay? So I pretty much soaked my napkin to my wood base. Right? And I'm going to just kind of hold it and run that down on my edges here to kind of smooth out my shape of my base. And I'm gonna put this to the side and let this dry because we can't do anything with it wet. We need it dry, dry, dry. So I'm going to just make sure, I've got a little wrinkle right here happening. You can kind of see that, which is totally okay. In the area that it's in, I'm actually going to be covering up, remember, with my other sign. So it's totally fine if you kind of have that happening. So once you have your Mod Podge done, just put it to the side um, for that part. And then we're going to move on to the layer that's going to rest on top. So for this, I'm going to be using, like I said, that cardboard mini stretched canvas. And I'm going to do the same thing with my image. And so this is where that printable comes back into play. Um, you could do this a couple of different ways to measure. You can just cut it out. Um, you can see here my canvas is a little bit bigger than the image I'm going to be using. So what I'm going to do is just kind of find my middle here and just kind of use this as a guide to keep it straight. And I'll just go ahead and cut it all the way through. It will help. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's see. I kind of want my image to be centered there. So I'm going to just cut like so. And this printable gives you four images. So you can totally, you know, customize it how you want to. All right. So you can see here, like my image is a little wider than what this needs to be. So I'm just gonna give it a little trim. You can totally eyeball cut this or, you know, 
do whatever. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm pretty even here with my design to the edges of the sides and the top. So I'm just going to trim. And you can see I'm just trimming, trimming, trimming. And then the top is a little bit more there. So I'm going to cut some of that down too. So now I have this much smaller image. All right, so this is where the Mod Podge and the paint are going to come into play on how we add a little bit of coloring. So I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to take my Mod Podge again and I'm gonna just kind of give a good little layer right here to my middle section, like this. Thin little, well, not super thin, but just evenly spread out, okay? And then I'm going to apply this image to my canvas. Now, you can kind of see the difference in white color there. Um, if that, that doesn't bother you, then you don't have to do anything. If it does bother you, then you're going to want to do your best to kind of conceal that. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So um, at this point, I just want to make sure that my edges are secured down. And so I'm just kind of like pressing out any bubbles that I have here and just kind of using my excess Mod Podge to kind of do that here with my finger. Be careful though, because this is printed and depending on how your printer prints, you don't want to smudge your ink, okay? But I'm just getting my edges down. So you can kind of see it's kind of blending in now to the canvas, which is what we are going for. And we are going to take a little bit of color and just add to it. So for me, I would like to probably do like a little bit of gray. And this is more of a silver here. And I'm going to do a yellow, of course. We need some yellow. And probably a little white just to kind of help blend these together. So you see I've got just a little dabs of paint here. And what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm going to take my brush and I'm just gonna dip the very end tip of it into the paint because this is a small surface so I don't need a lot okay and I'm just going to kind of blot it out and I'm going to kind of blot into my image here like this and this is just to kind of you know like I said blend those edges into part of the picture here so now I'm going to go back with my gray and I'm blotting that in as well and it's gonna kind of create this like rustic sign look okay and then once I kind of have that I'm going back with my white and even though you really won't see the white what the white is going to do and I'm getting a little bit more than usual here is kind of just fade those other colors out you see how that works so it's kind of blending the two together but it's also like masking it down and making it more of a like blended tone. That's the beauty of paint. You can totally use it to your advantage. And like I can even bust into the color here of the white. You see that? So I'm just blending down into this sign with my white. And so it's subtle, but it's not stark white, you know? It's very subtle. Um, that's what's great about the paint. Okay, so now I kind of have my little printable there and it's kind of going pretty good, right? And it's blending in, it's making this sign, you know, a little weathered. It's kind of has its theme, but I think I'm happy with it like that. You could totally keep going, especially if you're like a painting artist or you're really good at painting, you could go a little further with this. But for this part of it, what we're going to do is we're going to leave this and we're going to set it to dry. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move it off to the side. And we're going to think now about our embellishments. So there's a lot of ways, um, like I said, that you can use embellishments. I actually found these um, from our local dollar store. And it has like what these are, like orange slices or maybe lemon slices or they could be limes. It's kind of questionable as to what they are. Um, you can see here, like these look like watermelons and pineapples. 
So I, while I like these, I'm not 100% sure that they kind of go with our sign here. So I think I'm not going to use these. I'm gonna put them to the side, but I just wanted to show you, these are some wood stickers. And this is the kind of thing that you wanna look for when you're gathering your supplies. But I am choosing not to use these in the end. I do have these, and I think these are super adorable, super cute. And I think that they would make a great little type of banner. So I'm going to pull these up out and we're gonna use these to create um, a little hanging tag sign. And I think it would be cute if we actually made the word um, sweet on the tags. So you can see I have two different sizes here, two different rows, two different sizes. I have my bigger tags, which is the first and third, and I have my smaller ones. And I think for this one, we're gonna go with the smaller ones. Um, and I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna spell the word sweet. So W or S W E E T. So I'm going to need five. And what's great about this is they kind of have a plastic backing on them already. And so you can just cut these into strips like this. Um, put away what you're not going to use. And then they're still kind of intact. And then I'm going to cut off my fifth one here from this group. And I'm going to put it there. So I'm gonna come back to my paint now. And I'm going, like I said, I'm gonna use the yellow because I think it's going to be a nice pop. And what I like about these little plastic backings for this little thing is that you can kind of hold it down and not get all the mess on you. So I'm just going to paint these little guys, these little tags yellow. And let me see if we hold that one down right there. Might need a second coat. We'll see how they dry. Um, how bright they are. I'd like them to be pretty bright. So we're gonna kind of let that rest and see how that works. So this is part of our embellishment, remember. And we just kind of want, you know, a cute little, oh, I just slid that into the paint. Don't do that. Okay, so there we go. Maybe another little color on that. And this paint, it's just acrylic paint. It, I keep doing that. It dries pretty quickly. So let's see how long it takes. Now, while I am um, putting those to the side to dry, we're going to make our ribbon or our bow embellishment using the um, little bits that I have here. So like I said, I found these at some local craft stores. You can do the same thing. And I'm just gonna show you a simple, easy bow that you can make that's really not a bow. It's kind of just a pieces of ribbon pushed together to make a cute bow. So hold on, I'm going to show you how that works. And while um, we are working on this, I have my glue gun. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and get it warmed up so we can get to our project, putting it all together once we get done. So um, this first bit of ribbon, super cute and adorable. I'm going to just pull it out here a good amount. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use, but let me just show you this ribbon. I just thought it was so adorable and be great for any kind of projects that you make with lemons. So it just says, life is short, make it sweet. And it just repeats with some lemons here. How adorable is that? It's super cute. So I'm gonna cut some off here. And I'm gonna cut to my, my lemons. Um, So I kind of want to do, you know what? I think I like, I like this, but I'm gonna just throw that to the side here. What I'm gonna do is try and get lemons in each group. So maybe like that, and then maybe use the one that doesn't have the lemons, kind of like that. So I've got two pieces here. See how we did that? Um, or I could do something where there's a lemon to the left 
and a lemon to the right. Look at that. Yeah, we could do it like that. I kind of like that better. All right, so we're going to work with that as our two pieces. I do have these little sunflowers. They have nothing to do with lemon, but they're super adorable. So we have that. And then we have our twine, which we're going to use that, a piece of this, to kind of tie it all together. So you really just need a little bit of this. I, I use this twine for almost all of my bows. And then I'm going to use a couple pieces of this burlapy ribbon that I have here. And I'm just gonna do two pieces about nine inches wide. You can go as wide or as short as you, or as long or as short as you want. So I kind of like to do, um, about nine inches and then trim after I look at it on the finished piece. And hopefully that makes sense. And then I'm going to use this lovely gray and white polka dot ribbon that I have. Again, two pieces about the same length like this. All right, so let me show you how this actually works when we go to making our bow. Um, so I've got two of every ribbon that I'm going to use, and I have three ribbons. You can certainly do more. Sometimes more is better, sometimes more is not better. It just depends on the piece that you're making and what you want it to look like. So I'm going to start with my thicker base. And you know what, I actually have, let's see, I actually have another ribbon burlap here, a little bit off color, but I'm gonna throw this one in there. So. And I just, I like it because it's a little more solid of a burlap than it is this one. Okay, you can kind of see the difference in colors and tones. And like I said, we do two of each. So to start, I like this one. Yes, it's kind of very much see-through, but this white that's running through, it is a, um, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's a bit of whimsy that we're looking for, kind of like this gray one. So we're just gonna layer up the burlaps here and the different, um, and you can see I have this one I didn't cut at an angle, so I'm gonna do that now. I like to start with an angle um, and then go from there. Okay, let's do it like that. We're, and I just, I just layer these up, guys. I just layer them up. I know you can't really see, and I make what's like a long X, right? You could do like a big X, or you could, you know, just pin. I kind of do it like this, so I kind of just make the X. You can kind of see that happening here. And then we're gonna do our life is sweet, life is short, make it sweet, ribbon like that. So I kind of have burlap gray, burlap gray, burlap gray happening. And then remember that piece of twine that we had? All right. So I'm just gonna take that, run it across the top, flip this over, and I'm going to tie a tight, super tight knot. And it's just gonna pinch all those ribbons together. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and tight and secure. Okay, you can cut these excess pieces off or you can use them to tie it onto your piece. So I just trim them to be the same length. These are my tie ribbons. All right, so once you kind of get it like this, now you can pull these apart and make this, you know, fitting. So at this point, I'm gonna start darting up my ribbons and I will just fold them in half like so and then I cut upwards to make that V like that. And I just do one section at a time and while I do that, it kind of pulls them apart. Now, I'm not cutting that top one because I already trimmed that to be how I wanted it. And then I'm going to do the same thing again here. Inward like that. And we're going to do this last piece on the end. So it kind of trims up our, our ribbons here. And we're going to pull them apart. Put this one back to where it was. And you can kind of see the whimsy that's starting to happen here with this bow, right, on this side. We're gonna make this side look very similar. Starting with the top, dart these downward. Polka dot whimsy gray here, same thing. And just so you know, these are all wired ribbons. 
That's my favorite kind of ribbon to use. And the reason is, is because you can bend it and shape the ribbon and it will stay where you put that positioning, okay? So just another tip there for you. Same thing, two left, like that. And we'll do this one down here. And you can see they don't fold over the same, which is totally fine. We don't need it to be absolutely perfect. We just need it to be something that we could work with. Okay, so at this point, you can start to like bend and shape it. I like to just kind of crumple it together a little bit, kind of get some curl and some bend in there, like naturally, and then kind of shape it out from there. What do you think? And you can kind of read Life is Short, make it sweet right there. All right, so I'm gonna take all my extra ribbons away my clippings, get those to the side. I'm gonna open these up. These have a little tie to them. So I think they might be kind of cute to put one, you know, oh, they're all stuck together. So let's see. Um, I can get that out. I'm gonna have to cut that. All right, so I think this would be super adorable. Put this to the side in the middle here, don't you think? I think that's so cute. And the beauty of this one is it's wired, so it's not hard to attach um, to my bow there. Now I might wanna secure that with a little bit of hot glue, so I think we're just gonna do that just to be safe on that piece, and there we go. All right, so now we're going to put it all together. So I have pulled all my pieces um, back together. They are nice and dry for the most part. Um, you can see I had like a little bit of bleeding here to the wood color, but I'm not gonna be too worried about that. Um, I'm putting that together. Here are my little yellow tags and we're gonna spell the word sweet on those. And so this part of the project, what I like to do is just kind of place how I'm going to put everything, like I'm gonna either center this, like is it gonna be up high? And what I'm thinking about doing is just kind of going in the low area here. I want my bow to kind of be at the top, um, so you can kind of see how that looks. And also note here, let me just move these out of the way a little bit, so it's centered here. Also note, like you know that I started with this tag shape, but when I put my bow up here, it doesn't even really matter that that is the shape that I had. Um, to begin with. So I just wanna you know, mention that. Now if I angle this a little bit, you still can't see that shape, but it kinda helps like, you know, with how this looks. And you can see I kinda shifted this little guy a little bit too, and it's letting me have a little bit of that blue tag pop out. So in this part of the creation parse process, I just kind of like to you, you know, play with it before I actually glue it all down. Um, and then, like I said, this says fresh squeeze lemonade, and I wanted to use the word um, sweet here. And so I could kind of like, I don't know, I feel like, this might be, these are kind of sticky on the back, so I'm just trying to see how five little tags would line up. Um, and it's kind of looking like it's rough, but I like the color here with the blue, and I like the blue popping out, so. Fresh squeeze lemonade and then the word sweet. That might kind of be awkward. Um, so, maybe we do something a little bit different and I bring my tag, I do like the leaning to the left and I like it like that. So, I don't know guys, this is a little harder for me to decide um, what to do here on this part because I do like this little top embellishment, I like that being part of it. Um, but I also like, maybe we just don't put the word sweet. Not quite sure. Sometimes this is just part of that process. So if I curve it a little here with my little tags, that might make it, cause see like up here, there's just not enough room. So, you know, that's just how it goes, right? Sweet. I'm not quite sure. Um, let's just take a look if we just line 
the bottom with our tags. Does that make any kind of difference in our planning here? And this is why I say I like to, to kind of do this before I actually secure all of it down. Um, there, I kind of like that. I do kind of like that. Maybe if it's hanging off the edge and we curve it just a little bit, I think that's even better. All right, so maybe we're gonna do it like this. I kind of like this. Now these little tags, when I got these, they had a little bit of a sticky backing to them. So all I have to kind of do here is just press them and they kind of will stick, um, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm just pressing them on. They're not perfectly, you can tell, they're not perfectly um, circled. So I'm just gonna lift it up a little, re-stick it down. And I think I'm still gonna go with my plan here to use this marker and just write the word sweet on it. And this is a navy blue Sharpie. You can use black, you can do whatever you want. But there we go, sweet on the end. All right, so now I do like this turned here with the bow there. So you can kind of see when I take it off, it's like that. And so we're just gonna kind of lift this up. I'm gonna take my glue and just kind of get this glued onto the back here and leave it to its place. And kind of just press it down. Make sure it's secured into place. And then I'm going to um, put some bunch of glue right here and just kind of make sure that I get that nice and secured on there, try not to cover up my words. So, and try not to burn yourself all at the same time, right? All right, so just make sure my words are able to be read. And then I'm gonna kind of lift my ribbons up a little bit just by bending and squeezing them just to help give it that extra dimension. And it also helps me like push it down into that glue. All right, and so there we go. That is our little decor sign. And this is something super cute. You can put this propped up like on a little table alongside with a frame. If you have like a outdoor um, lemonade stand, if you're having friends over, prop this up and part of the centerpiece to your table. Super cute, super adorable, and it has the uh, printable design included with this project. All right, guys, so here's a look at our finished project. I hope you actually enjoyed making this. This is the cute little adorable sign, and like I said, you can prop it up, put it on a table, use it as part of your centerpiece, especially if you're serving all of your friends some lemonade and some sweet treats. This makes the perfect complement to hosting your friends or having some cute seasonal summer um, decor around your home. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all next time. Bye.